Welcome, everybody, to the final guest uh, here on Dana Palooza tonight. Uh, my guest comes from the gorgeous ladies of wrestling, uh, Roxy Astor. Uh, Roxy, thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me. And I have to say, I'm inviting you into my car today, which uh, I think this is like the second time I've ever done an interview in my car. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's interview on the go or on the mobile, we can say. I like that. I like that. It's like car car karaoke, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, so for those uh, watching and future watching, uh, if you want to meet this uh, amazing lady wrestler, uh, please go visit her at WrestleCon at the Millennium Biltmore Hotel. That's 506 Grand Avenue, Los Angeles, California, on Sunday, April 2nd, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. before the WrestleMania festivities take place later that evening. So make sure Ooh, yeah. to go ahead and uh, meet the wonderful uh, Roxy Astor. Um, also appearing will be Sunny, the California girl. She will be there on Sunday and also there for three days. Uh, the Royal Hawaiian will be there. So meet there, go there, and meet the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Roxy, thanks for uh, taking time uh, out of your day to hang with us here on Danapalooza. Yeah, no, it's, it's my honor to do this. I've been watching your interviews, and you've been, like, throwing down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, thank you. Um, it is. It, I didn't, when I first started out, I only had like five or six guests and we've just hit the 150 mark. Uh, so from May, 2021. So we are rocking and rolling and moving forward. <laughs> and you know what? It is so hard to, to do a podcast and, and stay enthusiastic about it and keep going. So congratulations on the 150s. I mean, that's, that's good. And you did it, you do this like for years through the pandemic or? Uh, so it, it actually, I first started doing a show by myself called the Wrestling Appreciation Show. And um, I did it to appreciate uh, the wonderful, talented uh, women and men within the squared circle. Um, and it was just myself talking about why I like these wrestlers for 15 to 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um that didn't really get any views or anything like it, it was just a nice start out project but um uh since i'm a big nerd and comic-con guy um when the pandemic uh started taking place i started going to galaxy con um which is a convention that they have in richmond virginia and in charlotte um and they were doing virtual meet and greets so I would pick two to three celebrities to meet a month. And after meeting more than my fair share, like probably after 60 of them, I knew that I wanted to do my own show. Uh, and I was just ready to uh, go on and move on to the next step. I've always wanted my own show. And I've always wanted to make sure that stories were told because like you, Roxy, people matter. People deserve to be heard and their stories matter. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I, I noticed that every time I do an interview, something new will, will come along or, you know, the, the same question can be asked, but then I'll think about something else. So it's like, huh, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know what your questions are. I don't know what you're going to throw at me, but I always try to answer something different or I think about something different. So Buddy, turn your headlights off. Okay, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had previous uh, Sunny the California Girl and the Royal Hawaiian have both been on here. Um, right. So I feel like I have to um, ask the same thing I asked them to ask you. And that would be your rap from Glow. And if you can demonstrate <laughs> uh i just have a question did sunny actually do it yes oh my god i'm so proud of her whoa <laughs> 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 didn't try to get a knock knock joke in there 
No, she told me all about the knock knock jokes, but um, I think it was told that uh, for me, because I'm asking all of you to rap, that I need to come up with one of my own at some point in time. <laughs> I always like when people do come up with their raps um, and I like going to the comic cons and meeting people. And uh, it's fun when they sing the rap to me, there's these two twins and uh, April, you know who they are, Dan and uh, his brother, they're twin brothers. When I first met them, they were fans of, of Royal Hawaiian and they're glow fans and they love all the glow girls. I walked up to them and they're identical and they were singing my rap, like on, like every, I think I have like three or four raps and they were doing this whole glow thing. So I think it's great that the fans remember our raps because even, you know, you know, 37 years later, but do I remember my rap? Let me think. When you meet with Roxy, you better beware because I'm really strong and debonair. This jet set girl never backs down because all she wants is a glow crown. Now that you know my name is Roxy, it's obvious that I'm rich and foxy in the ring. There's no one faster because they can't beat. That's for Willie, Roxy Astor. <laughs> <laughs> I got told that I look like, that. what they call me? Uh, something McGee, uh, Shoulders McGee, because I would always do that in my matches. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Bryson, you brat. Now I always think about that. So if you go back and you see... Uh, my wraps, you can see those uh, shoulder pads. Maybe it's shoulder yes. pad McGee or something. It was very funny. Uh, <laughs> can I can I give a shout out to my hairdresser though? Can I yes, give a shout out course. to her? Yes. To my beautiful hairdresser and friend, Mauro. You always do such a good job. I love you, Mauro, and you're the best. So that way I can <laughs> tell her it's on at 7.3. So that way we know. Okay. She's the best. Yeah. So that's my raps. That's a few of them. And I know I'm sure there's more. Uh, when we did the play, there was we did another rep too. I was trying to trying to think of it. But I think I wrote my own rap. So when somebody else writes a rap for me, it's just it's not the same. <laughs> I can't even remember what it is. And but yet I can remember 37 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, that was uh, very uh, wonderful. I will give you virtual and a uh, round of applause. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Just the, the fact that I memorize it. <laughs> and the more that people tell me don't sing it or don't do it is the more, and you guys know this about me, if you meet me in person, I'm going to do it. So if I got your Achilles heel and I know what it is, I'm going after you. I yes. should have been a bad girl. Yes. <laughs> yes i i agree so uh i almost think cobra kai no mercy uh <laughs> i do too like none <laughs> <laughs> um i was watching one of your matches recently uh mm -hmm. a lot of them are available on youtube uh i was watching your match versus mabel uh, do you have any recollection of that? <laughs> yes, I do. That was, oh God, that was a crazy match. Okay. So when you're, when you're rehearsing and you're doing things, you're not rehearsing with your makeup on. Uh, and if you remember that she put the hood on me, mm -hmm. remember that? Yes. Okay. So, uh, back in the day, there was like so much Aquanet and glitter. <laughs> and I, I had the glitter kind of going like that, that when she put the hood on me, because you're not going to go, let me put on my makeup and let's practice the hood and let's do it that way. You know, yeah. you don't do that. You just kind of, no, it'll work out. It's all perfect. So <laughs> she put the hood on me. I couldn't see. And then the glitter got into my eyes and actually cut my eyes because oh, it, no. the glitter back then was, I mean, it was like glass. It was like true glitter now it's like fairy dust so <laughs> it was it was and the aquanet and so i felt like when you took it off like everything just kind of stuck <laughs> i just remember kind of 
feeling for it and, and I couldn't really see and I, and if you look at it you'll see all my makeup smushed yeah <laughs> uh, I look like I'm just like one-sided glitter which is kind of cool in a way I look like beastie there for a moment <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know you don't you don't kind of think of uh things like that you know you you just kind of okay and I think that was one of my first matches to be honest so if I can make it through that and go, th I knew I could make it through anything. Um, was it a good match? I don't remember. Was it good? I was thoroughly entertained. <laughs> you sound that with such enthusiasm. <laughs> My favorite <laughs> match, though, was Dementia in Roxy and Big Bad Mama. Oh, yes. I, I shared that one, too. So that Oh, that was so much fun. That was, that was the best. <laughs> and you know, the crazy thing about that is dementia was really walking around with an axe. Oh, wow. Like a, a real axe. And just like <laughs> the he uh, heavy metal sisters with fire, mm -hmm. like we really did things. We just had to duck, <laughs> we had to move, <laughs> get out of the way. Or, yeah. you know, I mean, things could have happened, but that's just the way they did things back then. I mean, I'm sure it's like the insurance and everything else is totally different now. Everything's different. Yeah. That's why I don't think glow would really would work now with how we were back then. Very political, incorrect. And to have a name like dementia, I honestly did not know what that meant back in the eighties. And until Matt Simber told us that it was actually, you know, a disease and none of us, I'm well, I didn't know. And we just all thought it was funny. And then when you look back at it, you go, that was sick, <laughs> you know. <Yeah. laughs> but she was yeah. great. She was she was great. Oh yes, definitely uh, a classic match indeed. Um, so, what does it mean to you now, uh, going to these conventions and meeting these people and signing things? What does it mean to you? It means everything. I <laughs> honestly, I fan out over the fans more than they fan out over me. I ran in, it's at Knott's uh, Berry Farm, and that's where they have the uh, tasting. And I ran into one of the twins I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, ah, oh my God, it's him. Ah. <laughs> because you know what? They, they bring you back to, honestly, it was such a good time. And the fact that they remember uh, once you're forgotten, you know, it's like, you know, because we're just, we're normal people, believe it or not. Some of us are, some <laughs> of us aren't, but it's nice. So I, I go out there. I don't have a lot of merchandise. Royal Hawaiian is like, she's got the table set up. Like, oh my God, I go shopping. <laughs> yeah, she told me. <laughs> she's great. She's great. So um, when I go, I go there to, to meet the fans and talk to them and, and, and hear the stories and and listen to them on what glow meant to them and to me so i just go out and have fun with them and i'll rap with them i'll put them in headlock so we have fun <laughs> so i probably had just as much fun if not more than they do yeah most definitely um i know people ask me when when did i first start watching glow that's 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 a question that patricia and uh april asked me <laughs> You still there? Okay. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I... Hello. Oh, I think you froze. Uh, just uh, give it a minute, folks. I, I think that there's just a slight technical uh. issue. finish it there you are you okay yeah i'm there okay <laughs> yeah for, for... Wait, wait wait no wait Let, let's freeze together you ready go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> oh my goodness that was fun <laughs> yeah it, i love i love technical difficulties 
very true of the modern <laughs> era. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, but uh, so when you're signing these different uh, items, do people bring certain items for you to sign or? Uh, you know what? I feel like that I haven't gone to a lot of conventions since the pandemic, uh, but I'm going to come out with a very cool t-shirt. Uh, I, I had the fans ask for t-shirts from me. And so, and I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do a t-shirt. So I, I did this t-shirt and I call it, it, actually it's my kids making fun of me. My daughter, <laughs> Lindsay said, I go into Roxy mode. And when I'm in Roxy <laughs> mode, you got to watch out. Cause I'm just like, <laughs> I'm feral and I get stuff done. So she made it for mother's day and it says Roxy mode. And um, so I did it for the cruise on one of my cruises. I made these t-shirts with green Roxy mode. So we have this great cruise picture. We have like 35 people wearing Roxy mode t-shirts. It's incredible. <laughs> so I think I'm going to um, maybe do like an old vintage picture and put it on a t-shirt. And uh, I made a jacket and that's going to be given away on the cruise. And it's a jacket that is like kind of, it's green. And I did the design from my costume. And it's going to be on the back. And I'm going to go to WrestleCon. I'm going to get a bunch of autographs. And then <laughs> I'm going to let somebody win on the cruise that we're going to in May. Somebody's going to win that jacket. And it's a one-of-a-kind jacket. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's really cool. I got to send you a picture of it. It is so cool. Yeah. It's yeah. like a disco, disco green jacket. <laughs> yes uh um patricia did mention the cruise and uh she did recommend that i should take up on that <laughs> well i mean it's in may and and here's here's the difference with this one okay i it was before the the pandemic right it was our fourth annual mm -hmm. afterglow cruise and i had everything worked out uh, i was talking to debbie miller who is dallas and she was telling me, Roxy, there's something going on. I'm like, yeah, people get sick on the cruise all the time. And this is like, I think the cruise was, I think in April or something. And we're watching it or it could have been in March and we're watching the TV and before it even really hit. So it had to be before then I go, you know what? I'm going to back out. Uh, I want everybody get your money back and I don't want to hold on to your money. I don't want your cruise ship to hold on to the money. Just get your money back. And and thank God we did. So that was with Norwegian. It took a little while because remember what happened, all the cruise lines. It was crazy back then. But I wanted oh, yeah. the afterglow to be remembered, uh, not for, you know, oh, they kept their money and did that. It was like, you know what? I, I made the right decision. So this cruise is about, and you might not have seen any advertising. I might have done it once, but I... I think another uh, technical freeze. <laughs> All right, I could be frozen too. Hi. Are you frozen? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you ready? Are you ready? Let's do it. Ready? Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> said I can do that too and I did. <laughs> um so we were talking about the cruise? Yes. So yeah. this, this cruise is I call it an afterglow reunion cruise. So it's but I'm still known for doing crazy things. So we've got I think like maybe 24, 25 people going and I want to mm -hmm. keep it like that so I can just go party with everybody. Um I'm notorious for putting um a soul train line together at nightclubs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should have had a cruise director because I get everybody dancing. And I think I run the ship when I'm when I've had a couple shots of tequila. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta watch out for me. But uh 
I, I make sure everybody has fun and that's why they go on it. And, you know, if I want to do it again, um, you know, I might want to give it a break next year. And, you know, I just want to play it by <laughs> ear. I just want to have fun with the people that were supposed to be there. It's. <laughs> I, I think you should make a, another, um, a shirt as far as with the cruise ship and have Roxy cruise ship mode, you know, since. <laughs> oh, or, or, or Roxy one shot tequila mode. <laughs> yeah. A boat on there. <laughs> a little shot on there. No, yeah. but it's fun. And, and uh, it's good that, you know, we'll, I'll see Debbie and my kids are going, my kids are a lot of fun. My daughter, Kayla, she had a tryout with WWE. Awesome. Yeah, and she was in Juvie Hall in Wrestlelicious, and awesome. that's kind of like her dream, but honestly, the way wrestling is going now, it's kind of like, eh. <laughs> Did I hear that Naomi is not in WWE? I I don't know if she is temporarily. It's a lot of uh, rumors. She hasn't been on television for a long time. She's uh, going to be at WrestleCon. Months. Yeah, I've I've heard of that. Um, it, it's just one of those things sometimes where sometimes it's better when they leave and then they can really create themselves and have all this freedom and then uh, things go out better for them. So that might be her path. We we'll just oh, have to is wait that, and is see. that like is that like Mandy Rose? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've 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 heard about that and I felt that was like a shame because I felt like she was talented. You know what? Mandy's very smart. What are you talking about? She's very smart. She's more. She's in uh, more demand now. And oh, don't yeah. think WWE will not take her back. They'll take her back in a second. Yes, they will. Mm -hmm. We know. We know how that goes, right? Yeah, it, it's 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 playing games basically. Yeah. So. Um, now, as far as um, when you were finished with Glow, um, did you know immediately what you wanted to do, or did it take time to figure out what was the next part of your chapter? Okay, so I actually left Glow um, because I was going to have a baby, and my son now is 33, and when I get mad at him, I'll go, you're the reason I quit Glow. And I go, fans, <laughs> Quite <laughs> he gets a kick out of that. Um, so I, I'm also a hairdresser and oh, uh, okay. fashion designer. So I had a few things to fall back on. Uh, wrestling was just one of those things that I was a fan of glow that I'm one of those things and where I'm kind of like, I'm going to go do that. And so I tried out, got it. And it was just like, okay, let me go do something else. I, I don't, maybe I would have tried out with WWE if I mm -hmm. didn't have a child, but honestly, I wanted to be a mom. Yeah, definitely. I wanted to be a mom and I have three kids <laughs> and uh, I ended up becoming a, a fashion designer for baby clothes. And then all my stuff was awesome. in like Neiman Marcus, uh, Chris Jenner's store. It was called Smooch and I was in 700 stores. Oh, all wow. My That's Roxy mode. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. And, and the Thing I saw my one of my outfits pop up on Friends and mm -hmm. uh, Oprah, and I had to overnight an outfit to Jamie Lynn Spears because uh, oh. it was supposed to be like on the front of the magazine, mm -hmm. and then I got it was OK Magazine. I oh I look at it, I go, that's not mm -hmm. mine. <laughs> <laughs> tickles, my the my company name was Tickles and Giggles, and you see, uh -huh. a little, but I have that magazine. And now Tickles and Giggles is a pot dispensary company. So. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I had a good name. I had a good name, but I, I let the, the name go. So that's okay. I was the first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so do you keep in touch with, I, I mean, I know you talked to, uh, uh, April and Patricia, but do you talk to any of the other girl, uh, glow girls regularly? I talk to, uh, let's see, Godiva. Okay. Her and I were 
enemies on Glow. <laughs> Plus, I hated her because she had this gorgeous hair. Just <laughs> wanted to yank it, you know. To <laughs> any any time that I could like do a move to her that involved her hair, like either strangle her with it or hair mare, yank it, or whatever I could do, I would do it. And and a, a funny Aww. story is, and I swear I didn't mean this, Godiva, but you guys will all think I did from what I just said. Um, so I was doing some of the hair for Glow. I gave Stinky her uh, her look, Beastie. I gave her her mohawk or bohawk. Yeah. Um, I did uh, Godiva's roots, uh, oh, okay. and I turned them yellow. Whoops! <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> but um, now I I I do this uh, food pantry for animals where she works at the OC. Ah, an animal! Yay! Um, uh, I'm fostering right now a cat that just had five kittens. I have that at my house. Hi, B I've got a cat that looks just like that, and her name is Biddy. This is uh, our wonderful, um, also co-host with Dana Falooza. This is Tilly. And mine's called Biddy. Hi, Tilly. I used to have a cat named Tilly. Oh, she's cute. So, you yeah, let up? her do the interviewing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Tilly's a big girl, huh? Look. Yeah. <laughs> you got a cat on your head. <laughs> yeah. She uh, will sometimes sit there. So. Ah, <laughs> she's cute. See what you did to her? <laughs> <laughs> she's cute. So I, I love my animals. So uh, I go to the pantry once a month. I became volunteer of the month last March. And uh, Dawn or Godiva tells yeah. me what to do. Uh, she tells me what to do, but that's okay because our heart's in the right place. And then we uh -huh. feed like it's about 200 families, so they don't surrender okay. their animals. So I'm all about rescues and animals. And if you watch me, I don't know if you're on Instagram, people might mm -hmm. unfollow me because I show what pets need to be saved. And if I can use my platform, Roxy Aster, saving an animal, that means more to mm -hmm. me. Sorry, guys, than anything. So. I'm like obsessed with my animals because they don't have a voice. So I think we have to right. be the voice for them. Exactly. You have to speak up for them. Tilly is uh, is a rescue animal. Tilly was surrendered twice uh, before I got her. So so was Biddy. And uh, she was surrendered because she was fat. And that's not nice. <laughs> so um, a funny twist is she loves to sleep on my treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> my cat sleeps on my treadmill, which gives me the excuse to not to use a treadmill. Okay. <laughs> um, Tilly, uh, the first family was a uh, was a uh, they were hoarders, so they couldn't take care like of, and they had kind of like a not a good environment. So she got moved out of there, and then the second person, she couldn't take care of herself anymore. So then uh, you know, they did the right thing. You yeah. know, it's it's tough out here too. There's so many animals being surrendered. So I'm glad you you went to a shelter. Yes. Um. So what happened was is um I went to a shelter in Ohio, and mm -hmm. I originally wanted a declawed cat, and the, the thing was, no. did you well, ask for a declawed cat? Well, the thing was, it was already declawed. Like I didn't ask for them to do it. Like they already had that because. I just thought of the furniture, like that was originally in my mind thinking because this animal was already declawed, you know, but they all had health issues and uh, one cat scratched me and caused my thumb to bleed. And then I took Tilly out and she rubbed my thumb and licked it and kind of like took care of the blood that uh, this other cat who was called Shredder. I don't know why I bothered to touch him named Shredder, but. <laughs> well, hello, <laughs> Wolverine, right? <laughs> yeah, but um, she pretty much, I had this tear like here and she was licking and trying to fix me and she nuzzled under my chin. So, um, uh, yeah, knew... they don't, they don't do the, uh, the declong anymore, but honestly, my, my couch is tore up. Even though mm -hmm. I have a whole condo and I go and mm -hmm. I give, um, I give my couch mm -hmm. haircuts, like 
I cut off the little round little things they do, but they have their scratching posts. But they yeah. were kittens, so it, yeah, it is what it is. I'm like, yeah, it's materialistic or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah they're. I don't even think they do declaw cats anymore. I don't think they do that. They used yeah. to do it. it. It was the thing to do, but they don't do that anymore. Yep. And then, so enjoy uh, your your cat without the claws because the next cat you're gonna get, and you might as well call her Karma. It's gonna come back at you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tilly, Tilly does have her claws, though. Um, so I went with a clawed cat. Uh, but um, Tilly, uh, right now, we're trying to introduce her to another cat uh, at my mom's place named Celie. Just looks like her. And um, they want. Uh, she wants to constantly do the touch noses. And Tilly doesn't want to do that 10 times in one visit, you know. Yeah. So she's currently backing up and hissing because she keeps getting in her grill. <laughs> yeah, they, they got to find their their way. And just like with, with my cat, um, my cat hid for about a month. And I just put food, cat box there and hid. And, and now she's out. Cats are very unique creatures. So... It's, it's really, it's up to them how things roll in the house. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's, it's their world. Dogs are different. Yeah. Um, Tilly, Tilly does a little bit of wrestling. Tilly does a little bit of wrestling. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? Uh, yes. Tilly does the kitty cat, uh, cross body off the fridge. That's, a, that's her. Wow. <laughs> her move. That's impressive. Yeah, she she will fly in the air and knock me over, and then the Ben and Jerry's ice cream is on the floor next to me, and she's licking uh, it. So, well, that's she knows her. what she's doing, though. Yeah. So, so Tilly is a heel. Yeah, Tilly uh, is a heel. Really? <laughs> Probably explains why she doesn't like John Cena, but you know. <laughs> Does anybody like John Cena? Yeah, some people do. Uh, <laughs> okay. I like The Rock. Yes, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, I my favorite was Randy Macho Man. Oh, I loved, yes. I loved him. Uh, it was so sad about Lan Lanny Papo, his brother. Yeah. Uh, he was such a nice guy, and mm -hmm. he was just so good to the fans and would always talk about, um, you know, his brother. And it just, it's weird because I saw it on Facebook that he was at a play, and just the next day he passed away. Yeah. I, I met Lanny one time, and he put the Macho Man ring, fall of fame finger on my ring. Aww. Yeah, so. Yeah, he, he was, was such a good guy. He and then Medusa has told me Macho Man stories, so. Oh, I know stories about Medusa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think my I think my boyfriend went out with her one time. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Back in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> and I'll deny it if you say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else you want to say as we wrap things up on Dana Palooza? Yes. Uh, besides the Afterglow Cruise and WrestleCon, I'm going to say thank you, Dan, for rescuing animals from the shelter. You are Dan the man. That's what I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to go ahead and uh, this is going to wrap it up on Dana Palooza. Wait, I'd like to. Can we do one more freeze? One more freeze? Yeah. Ready? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that's going to go ahead and wrap it up on Dana Palooza. I'd like to thank the wonderful and talented uh, Roxy Astor for being here on Dana Palooza. Um, Dana Palooza will be back in April with six more wonderful guests. So stay tuned and have a good evening.